Today we're covering how to wire a relay. Now, this is an RV1224. This is the most common kind of relay that you will see at Northeast Protection Partners. We're going to use this relay because it's the most common. But the principles you will learn here apply to every type of relay that we use and you will come across in your career here. Starting with the profile of the relay. The relay has eight terminals. There are three on the top regarding relays, three on the bottom for a relay, and a positive and negative. The negative and the positive are what you will use to trigger the relay. When you apply voltage to the positive and negative of this relay, the state of the relay will switch. This little red switch here indicates how much power. If it is in the on position, then the relay will accept 12 volt DC. If it is in the off position, then the relay will accept 24 volt DC. Always remember to check this switch when installing a relay. If you have it set to 12 volts and you put 24 in, you will fry the relay. Let's go over the contacts. So on each side you have a mirror. You have a common on each side. You have a normally closed on each side. And you have a normally open on each side. First, let's talk about relay theory. And to understand relay theory, we're going to talk a little bit about electrical theory. Electricity always wants to find the quickest path to ground. Now in the case of a relay, think of it like a switch. You can, either run, you can either run power through the relay using a positive or a negative trip into the common, or you can run just a common to your relay and have it trigger something. This is useful when you have to break a connection to something on a certain event, or when you want to trigger an event on a certain event. Examples of what you would use to trigger would be in a hugs event. When an alarm goes off, we will often have a short come from the common and the normally open with no power on it that goes to an access control solution that will lock out the access control, preventing people from badging out with a baby. Likewise, you can do this with power. In the case of power, you will jump power, you will trip your power through the common, and your load will go into the normally closed or normally open side. Relays are inherently simple. They're just like switches. In this case, with an RB1224, when, when the relay is not energized, meaning it is not powered, you're not sending any power here, the common is electrically shorted to the normally closed. If you apply power to the relay with the positive and negative leads, the common then shorts electrically to the normally open and it breaks its connection to the normally closed. What is the benefit of having two sides? Having two sides that are completely isolated like this is allows you to have one side that is powered, one side that is not powered, or two sides that are powered or two sides that are not powered. Now what would be the use case for one of these relays? We talked about giving it a trip, but how do you give it a trip? Well, generally, it's another relay. And the reason for that is because the relays that come in our devices are often very small and internal. They can't handle that much current. And if you try to run too much current through them, it either just won't work or you will burn the relays out. So what we do is we trip power through those relays and those relays will trigger this relay. Now, an RB1224 can handle five amps at 30 volt DC, which means if you have 30 volts coming into the common and you pass it through, it can handle up to five amps of current through this relay. Most of the time, you are never going to have more than five amps going through a 1224. If you need more than 5 amps at 30 volts, then you'll have to get a different relay. But the principle will be the same. You will have a normally open, a common, and a normally closed. And then you will have a trigger of some sort, usually a positive and a negative. So let's say I wanted to power a lock. And let's say I wanted to do it when there was a hugs event. Hugs is a very common system we install. It's infant security. It keeps babies from getting stolen. So let's say that when a baby is near a door, I want the door to lock. So coming off of the hugs controller, and we will go into better detail on this in the hugs videos, 
I would have my positive tied to the positive of that hugs controller. And then through the relays, I would have a negative trip coming into my negative. I would have either a jumper coming from my positive to this common, or if you're using a separate power supply for your locks, then you will bring a wire in from that and it will land your positive to your common, or you will land your negative to your common. It doesn't matter which, generally negative is safer, but it does not matter in the grand scheme of things. If I wanted this door to be locked in a hugs event, I would send my power through the hugs relay. Half of my, whatever my, wherever my power is, would go here into the common. In this case, we're gonna talk about a negative trip, and we'll show you that in a second. My negative trip would go here, and my lock negative would go to normally open, meaning that when the relay is off, there is no path to ground for the lock. And when my relay turns on, the relay will switch states, the closed side of the relay will then be open, and the open side will then be closed, giving my lock a path to ground, thus energizing it and locking the door. In my example, I have a power supply. We're going to use this as our means of powering the relay as well as the lock. In a normal case, this would be a power supply and some form of other relay, whether that's a keypad or some kind of controller. But in this example, we're just going to use this power supply. I have a lock. Right now the lock is not locked. You can just pull it and move it freely. And you have your relay. Now I want to go over how this relay is wired. Again, my negative goes into the wire and comes into my power supply. My positive goes into the wire and it is sitting here. The relay is not energized. I then have a jumper coming from my negative to my common. On the lock end, the negative of the lock, because we are doing a negative trip, not a positive trip. If we were doing a positive trip, we would want the jumper to be in the positive side or going back to our power supply, feeding the common. On the lock end, we would have the positive side of the lock in the normally open slot. We'll demonstrate this quickly before showing the example. You can see this little red light here. If I energize the relay, that light turns on. So, let's look at our electrical path here. So, the lock is hooked to the normally open side of the relay. The jumper is going from the negative to the common. The relay has a negative. The lock has a positive. The relay also has a positive. It is just not hooked up. In this configuration, because the relay is in the closed state, the lock cannot get power. Even though technically it has a path to ground, that path is electrically cut off. To prove that, I can still unlock this lock. Now you can see I have landed the relay's red wire to my positive for my power supply. The light is on, and as you can see, I cannot open this lock. This is because now there is current flowing through the relay and energizing my lock. What if I wanted this relay to kill a lock? So, as you can see, I have moved the lock's negative from normally open to normally closed. This now means that with the relay not engaged, there is current flowing through. You can probably tell because my power supply is humming. And if I go to the lock, I cannot pull the lock apart. You can now see that the relay is powered. Both are landed. But if I come to the lock, I am able to separate the lock. To reiterate, this is because I have switched it to the normally closed side, meaning with the relay engaged, in this case giving, getting power from an external source, my lock does not have a path to ground because the relay has switched states. Whereas normally, it is normally closed. Once the relay is engaged, it's now open. Therefore, my lock does not get any current. But if I take the relay and I unplug it, now the lock 
is getting current because the relay has switched states back to its normal position. That is how you wire up a relay. Now in this case we used a 1224, but this principle applies to basically every relay you will come across, including those that are on our devices. They all have a common, a normally closed, and a normally open. They all will get a trigger. In this case, in the case of a controller, that trigger is often a tag and field. In the case of a keypad, it will be the code being entered. Regardless of what the trigger is, the 1224 will help you switch your states. Again, think of this as a light switch. It's either on or it's off. In this case, you have two switches, and if you wire this up correctly, you can power two devices off of it. You can even do different things with the same event with this relay.